Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zaid Mahar, a third stage medical student. Me and my colleagues will present you about molecular basis of cancer. So just give me your attention and imagine with us. Most of us think that a tumor starts by mutagenic carcinogens, like UV light, which enter some cells and mutate a gene, proto-oncogene, that will result in abnormal replication. While this concept is satisfying, it wasn't compatible with histopathological studies, which had indicated that normal cell population passes through some intermediate states on their way to becoming malignant. In 1983, experiments on rats showed that a single mutation couldn't transform normal cells into tumor cells. Two mutations, and maybe even more, seem to be required to do this, so it occurs in multi-steps. Some of these steps include Number 1. Loss of antigen-presenting cells Number 2. DNA hypomethylation Number 3. Activation of oncogenes and number four, loss of tumor suppressor genes. Now we have oncogenes. So, the discovery of RAS genes in some tumors helped to prove this model. A mutation of one copy of these genes in homologous chromosomes was seen to be almost enough to result in a tumor. So, this means RAS alleles are dominant. This is number one. Number two, RAS and some similar genes can be termed as oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes. Those experiments in 1983 showed that a loss of one retinoblastoma gene isn't enough to produce a tumor. Only when the second retinoblastoma gene is lost from the other homologous chromosome, retinoblastoma tumor will occur. So this means Number one, some of cancer associated alleles are recessive. Number two, before the loss of these genes, they were protecting the body from development of tumors. So it termed as tumor suppressor genes, which were previously known as growth normalizing genes. Additional example of tumor suppressor genes is TP53 gene. A mutation of this gene leads to leaf Romney syndrome. So oncogenes always behave as dominant alleles, while tumor suppressor genes always behave as a recessive allele. Spontaneous DNA damage and DNA repair. The DNA may undergo a spontaneous damage by some mechanisms, such as deamination of cytosine or by environmental agents like alkylating agents. In addition to some chemotherapeutic agents, which have an effective anti-cancer activity in short term, but are responsible for causing secondary cancers in long term. All these increase the importance of repair response. Finally, the function of tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes are likely to be lost more frequently through DNA methylation and histone protein modification, other than mutation, and this is called epigenetic modification. But today, we will just take three examples of multi-step tumor development to talk about. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Noor Walid, a third medical student, and I'll continue with you by talking about oncogenes. Before I start with it, let's remember what is a proto-oncogene. As you know, proto-oncogene is a normal cellular gene whose products that promote cell proliferation. When a mutation occurs in this gene, it will be transformed into an oncogene. So, oncogenes encode proteins that have the ability to cause cellular transformation. These genes act as the dominant alleles and lead to overexpression of proteins or activating other mutations. One example of a proto-oncogene that may become an oncogene is RAS gene, which encodes RAS protein that is present in receptor tyrosine kinase. So, RTK, receptor tyrosine kinase, is a complex cell surface receptor for many growth factors, cytokines, and hormones. It consists 
of several domains, including tyrosine kinase and RAS. So, RAS are family of 39 GTP binding proteins, which are encoded by 36 RAS genes. The name came from the term root sarcoma, from experiments on RAS in 1960. They mediate proliferation, differentiation, and survival. RAS is a GTPase, that means it converts GTP into GDP. When RAS protein binds to guanosine diphosphate, it is inactive. It is activated by binding to guanosine triphosphate. When RTK is activated by a growth factor, RAS will be activated by binding to guanosine nucleotide exchange factor, GNEF. Although RAS is a weak GTPase and requires additional protein known as GTPase activating protein, GAP, to promote GTP hydrolysis. Finally, some mutations decrease the rate of GTP hydrolysis by RAS or make the RAS less sensitive to GAP. This makes RAS permanently bind to GTP continuously active and able to activate downstream pathways of proliferation even after the growth factor has been removed. So, this helps in development of a tumor. As an example, RAS mutations in esophageal, colonic, and pancreatic tumors. Now, I let my colleague Noor to continue. Welcome, I am Noor Khadar, Muslim Medical College, a third stage student. Now, I will explain an important gene in our genetic map called tumor suppressor gene. Tumor suppressor genes have an important role in our genetic map. This is because they encode proteins which are responsible of regulating this cycle events by blocking them whenever there is any error. Tumor suppressor genes do their work by either poisons, that is a short term stoppage in cell cycle, senescence when the cell stops dividing forever, or apoptosis, which is absolutely necessary for any living cell. It is responsible for maintaining constant cell number in a particular tissue. It also plays a defensive mechanism by eliminating dangerous cells which have a huge damage in their DNA. Retinoblastoma protein is a protein encoded by retinoblastoma gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene located on chromosome number 13. A loss of retinoblastoma gene will definitely cause a tumor because it will lead to loss of retinoblastoma protein. But this is not the only way that leads to loss of retinoblastoma function. First of all, Retinoblastoma protein is inactive when it binds to large number of phosphate molecules. In G1 phase of the cell cycle, retinoblastoma protein is activated by hypophosphorylation. Active retinoblastoma protein form repressive complexes with the transcription factor E2F. These repressive complexes restrict the transcription of the S phase genes so that the cell cycle will be arrested due to deficiency in S phase proteins. Inactivation of retinoblastoma protein is done by the enzyme cyclin dependent kinase CDK, and this enzyme requires cyclin molecules. It adds phosphate molecules to retinoblastoma protein. When retinoblastoma protein is inactivated, E2F will be released. And this leads to the repression of S phase genes and the cell cycle continue. So this also means the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase act as oncoprotein in human cancers. For example, the gene carotenoid cleavage dioxygenase CCD1, which encodes cyclin D1, is amplified or overexpressed in more than 50% of human breast cancer cases. P53 is also called the guardian of the genome because it is the most important protein in tumor suppression. The name came from its molecular weight which is about 53 kilodalton. 
The tumor suppressor gene, which is responsible for P53 expression, is called a tumor protein 53, which is located on short arm of chromosome number 17. P53 is activated in response to different citrus conditions, including DNA damage, activated oncogenes, telomere shortening, and some other citrus conditions. P53 can upregulate a protein called P21 that inhibits cyclin dependent kinase that lead to activation of retinoplastoma protein to arrest the cyst cycle. P53 also activates genes that control or promote apoptosis when there is extensive DNA damage, such as BCL2 associated exoprotein, P53 upregulated modulator apoptosis, and P53 inducible genes. So, it is not surprising that a mutation in tumor protein 53 are almost a universal feature of the human cancers because P53 has a wide range of roles. Now, my colleague Muhammad will continue with DNA repair. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Yunus Abdesitar and I will talk about DNA repair pathways. There are six primary DNA repair pathways, which are nucleotide excision repair, mismatch repair, non-homologous end joining, homologous recombination, translegional synthesis, and base excision repair. Each pathway is composed of series of biochemical events that include sensory proteins or DNA binding proteins, enzymes that remove the damaged bases, and enzymes that restore the normal DNA sequence. There is an excess in the functions of the DNA repair pathways. So when one pathway is impaired, another pathway can partially compensate, and the second pathway will be upregulated. For instance, a cell that is deficient in homologous recombination pathway may depend more on the non-homologous end joining pathway in order to repair double strand breaks of the DNA. The scientists have noticed this phenomenon as a hyperdependence on the second pathway. They called it synthetic lethality and they used it for designing a new anti-cancer drugs. How? Well, in the normal human cells, all six DNA repair pathways are working correctly, whereas in the tumor cells, the disruption of one pathway such as homologous recombination repair pathway leads to instability of the genome and hyperdependence on a second pathway such as base excision repair pathway. The cell uses base excision repair pathway to correct damaged bases or single strand breaks of the DNA. This pathway is regulated by the enzyme polyadenosine diphosphate ribose polymerase 1 or PARP1, which adds adenosine diphosphate ribose molecules to the base excision repair enzymes to enhance the activity of this pathway. So, in this case, any PARP1 inhibitor may be used alone to kill the tumor cells, since they cannot live with two pathways disrupted. Now, how does this bunch of information relate to our clinical practice? Approximately 10% of breast cancer cases have a strong family history of this disease. Half of them are heterozygous carriers for mutations in either BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes. Many strong evidences suppose that BRCA1 is a tumor suppressor gene since some breast cancer cases have a loss at BRCA1 locus. And recent studies indicate that tumor cells which are deficient of BRCA1 gene are hyperdependent on base excision repair pathway and have elevated PARP1 activity. According to that, these tumors appear to be hypersensitive to PARP1 inhibitors, so we can use them in the treatment of some breast cancer cases.